Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and today I'm giving No Line Watercoloring another try. This is something I only do occasionally because it scares me a lot, mostly because I'm not that good at it. It takes time and I always worry that I won't be happy with the results. But of course the only way to get better at something is to keep practicing. And I'll share with you what I learned along the way, because maybe it's something that will help you if you want to try it. I'm using this new Tidings Wreath from Memory Box. It's bigger than a card front, which gives lots of possibilities for positioning it on your card. I've already stamped it three times on Ranger Watercolor cardstock with Gina K. Amalgam Ink and Whisper. I'm going to use my Altenew watercolors, and I started with the berries. They're grouped together in little bunches, so I have a couple of tips here for keeping definition so they look like individual berries and not big blobs of red. First, color them one at a time and don't color the ones that are next to them right away. I worked through each grouping of berries, coloring as many berries that weren't touching in each group, and then I moved on, letting the painted berries dry. There's enough going on in this wreath that it's pretty easy to do that. Next, I was using my mixing palette, and I mixed some darker reddish purple into the red, and I went back over the berries just along the lower left side to create some shadows and dimension. So once I had the first round of berries done and dry, I mixed a little orange into my red paint and I went back to the next round of berries that hadn't been painted the first time. Changing the color slightly is another way to keep each berry defined. Next I did some lime green for the little leaves. Same principle, I put down a layer of color working around the wreath and then I went back in with a slightly darker color that I mixed by adding some darker green and I put that along the bases of the leaves for dimension. Throughout this painting, I turned my board so that I was working comfortably, but when I was adding in shadow layers, I needed to remember where the light is coming from. Obviously, this will change depending on the position of the board, and if you don't get it at least mostly right, it's going to look a bit mixed up when you're done. Next, I chose some of the larger leaves to work on. This time, I mixed a more turquoise teal color. A good mix of colors in the leaves will also help with definition. And definition is especially important in no-line watercoloring, since you can't rely on the black outlines to tell you what you're looking at, or painting for that matter. Another tip is to keep your stamp packaging close by. There were times, mostly when I was painting the leaves, that I couldn't even really see what I was supposed to be painting. So having that crisp black outline on the packaging was a real help. When I finished with the teal leaves, I mixed a darker green and I went back in with that to fill in the rest of the leaves. Again, I went back over with my darker shade to add shadows and dimension, and in places where I had gone too dark, I went back over with some water or I lifted color off with a paper towel. I found these paints to really be quite forgiving, which is nice for an amateur like me. And throughout, I kept going back in and filling in any berries that had been left. I noticed that the stamped veins on the leaves were showing through, so I thought I would deepen them a bit. I chose brown this time and I switched to a smaller brush. As well as adding brown to the leaf veins, I also used it on the stems and branches between the leaves, and this added a more earthy tone, and again, more definition. After that, I just kept filling in areas all around. I really feel like you could keep going forever, but at some point you just have to stop and call it done. One painter who really inspires me is Debbie at Lime Doodle Designs. She makes it look easy, but of course she's practiced much more than I have, and she's really amazing. If you don't already follow her, check her out for some really good tips on this type of watercoloring. Debbie always finishes her paintings with white gouache and then perfect pearl splatters. I felt like I would do the same, more to kind of soften my imperfections. I don't have any gouache, but I do have this really old, almost dried out acrylic paint, and I just added enough water to it to make it work. I don't do this often, and one thing I learned here was in future, I should mix it closer to the edge of my acrylic block, so it doesn't have to travel as far, and maybe I can actually end up with more on the painting. I also don't have any perfect pearls, so I use the tube on the spray nozzle from my Avery L Clear Shimmer Spray. It gives a pretty shimmery splatter, which is perfect for Christmas. I gave it a quick dry with my heat gun, and then I removed the tape I used to hold it to the board to minimize warping. To finish the card, I trimmed it down to a 4 inch square. Now it looks less like a wreath and more like a frame of foliage. I also cut a 4 and a quarter inch black mat to create a dark contrasting frame. 
I put foam tape on the back of the watercolor panel and I popped it up on the black mat. Then for my sentiment, I cut this simple joy from Birch Press Designs three times and I stacked them up with liquid glue. This is actually the backing layer of a two layer die set and it has embossed lines to show you where to put the top layer, but I decided to keep it simple and just use the base. And that's kind of it. There are things I would change on this little painting, but overall I'm pretty happy with it and I think it makes a very pretty Christmas card. If you want to try no-line coloring for the first time, I would suggest an image like this. I think that flowers and leaves are probably a bit more forgiving than faces on people or critter images, or maybe that's just me. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel for more inspiration. Product links are below and also on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.